Hello, my name is Tovio Roberts, and this is another session of latent topics in data science. Um, so today, we're going to be looking at some simple image filters, kind of your standard image filters that you would learn, um, let's say, out of the Gonzales and Woods book, which I, uh, I'm not linking to in the description, but I'm recommending. Um, I just have the name in there. And we're going to be mostly using filters that use convolution. Actually, I think all of the filters we're going to use will be using convolution. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Here is our repo. I'll go ahead and drop this in the comments or in the chat. And that should... Uh, I'll be updating this repo as we go forward. Um, so uh, when I'm talking about image filters, uh, we can sort of think about this as, you know, the types of things that you would use to generate a new image from from a an existing image. And uh, we can think about this in terms of Photoshop filters many of the photoshop filters that you've used if you've used photoshop are these filters under the hood and there are a lot of parameters you can change we're going to be just kind of uh coding these on the fly not going too deep into any of them um, but just sort of demonstrating and talking about the implications of these filters maybe in light of pre-processing an image or in light of removing noise from an image, um, again, could be part of pre-processing. And since all of these are using convolution, hopefully it will inform part of your understanding about convolutional neural nets when you start studying that. And um, yeah, uh, filters in general. So uh, I have a couple images that we're gonna be playing around with. One is of these two bears. And the other one is of Nikola Tesla. And uh, we might generate an image or, here, or two here and there. And the way that I'm going to code this, I'll mostly work, hmm, I'm probably mostly going to work in VS Code in this filters.py file. And that's going to be located in the SRC directory. And um, I'm also, I'm going to be displaying images through a Jupyter Notebook. And I'll spin that Jupyter Notebook up right now. So I'm just waiting for that to load. And yeah, so let's consider this idea of convolution really quick. Um, I have, uh, an image here that will hopefully help this to be intuitive. This is from an article called intuitively understanding convolutions, um, for deep learning that is on towards data science. Oop. Let me bring that back. And what we can see here is that there's some sort of operation happening and we're passing it across, we're sliding it across a two-dimensional matrix and or a two-dimensional array, let's say in NumPy. And what we're getting as a result is this new, this new matrix here. And that is each one of these, uh, let's say cells of this matrix is composed of the results of it's, it's some kind of composition of this function that is passing across uh, these windows, right? Each window of this results in a single value. That's our convolution. And um, in this case, we're going in steps of one, let's say one pixel or one, um, you know, one at a time, right? One column at a time and uh, we could change this so that we're going two columns at a time or three columns at a time. 
anything like that. And that we would call that the stride of the convolution. Um, notice that we're starting with this, in this case, we're starting with a five by five uh, array and we're ending up with a three by three array. And uh, that's a bit curious, you know, why are we reducing in this way? Um, well, we don't have to. And for most of the, fil well, for all the filters we're gonna write today, we're not actually going to reduce our matrix. We're not gonna reduce our array. We're going to actually uh, allow for um, a bit of crossover of this filter, of this kernel. Um, I'm gonna use a couple different words here. So kernel, filter, window, uh, all of those are gonna be synonymous for our purpose. And um, we can let this overlap the edges in order to construct a new array that is of the same size as the original array. And that's mostly what we're going to be doing. So let's, uh, let's look at this mathematically. It's, it's actually pretty simple. And I'm just going to demonstrate this by coding it out. We're just gonna code out um, a little bit of intuition around the convolution. And, um, you know, so we're just going to make a test array and we'll also make a kernel. And I'm just waiting for my notebook to spin up. I've been uh, having some issues with uh, open broadcasting software, just by the way. So some things get a little bit laggy on my computer. Um, I'm not sure what that is. I need to look into it. But uh, so here we go. I'm going to use NumPy. And um, so I'll just import NumPy as NP. And this is going to allow me to build my test array. So I'm just going to call this test. And I'm going to use the NP array function or method to build a five by five array. So um, this is my outer and I'm going to do uh, each of my rows. And I'm just going to populate this with some values. Um, oh, I don't know why it, there we go. And let's do let's see. Well, I probably hit insert at some point. Yes. Okay. All right. Let me put in these right brackets really quick and put commas. And so here's our, let's imagine this is an image or imagine it's just an array that we're dealing with. And let's just take a look at it. So looks exactly as what we just made. And let's make a kernel. And this kernel is going to be three by three. And let's do, oops, just do something really simple here. And okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, let's go ahead and look at this value here. So in test, we're going to modify this value. And we're going to do that by superimposing these over uh, these three uh, items right here. Okay. So this is what we're modifying. And um, what we're going to do is take the kernel and we're going to, for every one of these values, we're going to sum the multiplication of them. So three times zero plus three times one plus two times two 
uh, plus zero times two, plus zero times two, plus one times zero, plus three times zero, plus one times one, plus two times two. And uh, that's going to get us a new value for that location. So if we were to write this explicitly, we would say, um, this is going to be this location, right? We're looking at this location, we're superimposing the filter across here. Um, this is going to be uh, three times zero uh, plus three times one plus two times two plus zero times two plus zero times two plus zero times one plus zero times three plus one times one plus two times two. And we'll see what the new value should be for that pixel. And you can just take a look at that by doing that. And it's 12. So we would update this, or you know, if we're creating a new array instead, we would just um, put the value 12 in right there. Now, um, I'm going to, instead of using, instead of using uh, this sort of explicit way of convolution, of approaching convolution, I'm going to import something from scipy.signal. And I'm just going to use that for, um, for the convolution. So I'm just going to say this is one step of the convolution. And why don't I go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and import from SciPy the, the things that I'm going to use. So I believe this is um, import, actually, let's say from scipy.signal import convolve involve 2 d and i think that's all we'll need so let's perform this convolution and um this should be as simple as so i'm just going to say Um, we should just be able to take test and uh, let, let's call this new test or test output or something like that. Test out and we'll say convolve 2D. We'll pass in the image and the kernel and I'm just going to set the mode here and I'm going to set boundary to symmetric and have no fill value. Um, so essentially uh, what I'm saying here with mode same is I wanna make an output that is the same size as test. And that's what we should see here. So, oh, name image is not defined. Of course it's not because it's called test. And Okay, so what is happening there? Hmm. Hmm, interesting. That is not exactly what I expected. I wonder. So convolution in math and convolution in, uh, in convolutional neural nets is usually a little bit different. 
in uh, convolution and math, we tend to, um, well, we tend to flip this for the convolution. So, ah, I see. I think I see what the issue is. I already modified the value here. So let, let's try this again. Let me not modify this test uh, sub one one. And let's find out if that makes a difference. Okay, it made a difference. And um, huh, but it's not the difference that I expected. Okay, so let's walk through this again. Um, in this case, this should be two times three plus zero times three to six. Huh, I would expect six there. Let me just take a look and see if I'm messing something up in Convolve 2D. Take a peek at the documentation here. All right, so convolve 2D. Okay. Why don't we do this? Let's go ahead and take this whole thing. And I'm just gonna make an array of ones. And I could do this by using uh, np.ones, just doing this this way to be two, three, four, five, to be um, kind of more explicit about it. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. So this, this does make sense. Um, and why don't we go with this? Get rid of my bad math out of here. And all right, so with this array of ones, if we, if we look at this, um, we're going to be generating a sum of all of these every one of these multiplied by one right zero times zero times one plus one times one which is one two times one if we if we were to sum all of these this would be 10 and so we might expect to see a 10 in here so let's change this to a two okay so in this case um we're going to see uh, a growth in the upper left corner, which makes sense given our kernel. All right, so essentially what we're doing is we're passing a kernel across our array, and that's going to get us to a new array. And that new array is going to have, uh, it's going to be modified from the original, if that makes sense. So this is, uh, essentially passing a window. So let's start thinking about this in terms of modifying an image uh, pixel by pixel. And let's uh, start simply. Uh, let's go ahead and make a couple functions for the purpose of uh, viewing our images. The first thing I'm gonna do though 
is I'm going to import uh, these two images. So I'm going to call one I am one and I need to be able to import. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm just going to import a few different things here. I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. I'm going to uh, say from sk image import color. I'm going to say uh, from sk image import io, which we're going to use to actually pull the image in. And um, I'm going to pull in something else from SciPy that uh, I think I'm going to use in a little bit, but we'll see. I'll just do nd image and let's import our two images. So I'm going to do io dot im read and im read is your classic import. Um, actually, before I do that, let's make sure. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that our working directory was where I thought it was. And let's go ahead and read in an image. Okay, io.imread. And this is gonna come from images. And let's actually take a look at what is in images. So ls, I'll do images. Oh, let's do ls and these are the two names, so bears and Tesla sample. So I'll pull in bears and for IM2, I'll pull in Tesla sample. Okay, so I am one. If if we do that, we can see the actual array values. Notice these are all integer values, zero to two fifty five, and this um, is a standard RGB image. Let's look at I am two dot shape. Actually, I'll leave that there and say I am two dot shape, and again. It's a different size, uh, but it's still a three channel image. So three channel color image. Um, go ahead and push this up. Uh, okay. So let's, let's go ahead and show one of these images just to just to demonstrate uh, displaying them. And that'll just be plt.imshow, and I can do im1. And then I'll usually do the cmap of, of gray. So I'll do, actually, I think I can just do cmap, and then this will be gray. Let's find out. There we go. So those are our bears, and Let's do IM2 as well. Okay. So, um, you know, the, uh, the image size uh, should inform us of the kernel sizes that we use. That's something that we'll consider in a little bit. Um, so let's Let's make a quick image utility um, because we're going to. Um, hmm. Let's we're going to convert everything to floats, and we're going to go ahead and uh, utilize float values instead of integer values for these images. So I'm going to make a function called image utility. And we're going to pass in an image, and I'm going to say the image is going to just get that same value as type uh, np.float. 
So we're going to convert to floats for this image and um, let's go ahead and say if the length of the image shape is greater than two. So we're just checking to see, check if it's grayscale first. Um, and if not, we're going to pack the values to, to use. So, um, all right, so, I'm going to say um, the width, the height, and the color are, or sorry, and the channel are going to get the shapes. And if a uh, channel is greater than one, then I'm going to go ahead and just um, convert these values into a form that I want to use. So I'm gonna say image and that's channel zero. And Oh, I need to make sure I'm using the float value image when we're doing that. So notice I'm I'm just using a multiplier across the channels. And um, let's see where we end up with this. So let's go ahead and return the image. Now. So I'm going to overwrite um, I am one. Uh, or I'm not going to overwrite it. I'm just going to uh, make a different variable. So image utility. And let's pass in I am one. And go ahead. Let's see. We'll go ahead and show this image. So notice we have a grayscale image here, and uh, that this image should also be, if we look at the shape, we're dealing with just a simple array. And if we look at the rows, we're dealing with float valued rows. So this is fine for what we want to do. Um, I could have used RGB to gray when I did this, uh, but, you know, I'm just, in this case, um, using common multipliers from uh, a grayscale approach. So this is just getting these images in a form where I want them. And I'm going to say image two is going to get from the image utility that m2 and we can do the same thing for image 2. Now image 2 looked like a grayscale image that image of Tesla but it's not actually there's uh, there's color layers in there so let's go ahead and look at that 
and we're not really seeing anything particularly different. Um, like nothing particularly noticeable, but if I do dot shape, notice it is a single channel image now instead of a three channel image, which is what we prefer. Okay. So, um, we're going to be doing some comparative stuff here and um, I'm actually going to start throwing these functions into this filters file and we'll we'll go ahead and what do I need to import here I need to import NumPy, probably need, a, mm, I think I'll actually need all of these. So I, I could work solely in Jupyter Notebooks, but I don't really prefer that. Um, I think notebooks are convenient for displaying some things, but that's really it. So uh, I'm just going to from filters.py uh, import star so from src dot filters import star okay so let's try that again i'm going to uh i'm going to restart and clear output on this kernel and i'm gonna go ahead and run it again from down here and make sure that everything is working the way we'd expect it to. Apologies, still waiting on the kernel to restart. Yeah, this is uh, something about OBS, uh, open broadcasting software. I don't know if y'all have a, a different thing that you use for streaming. Um, I've been using OBS without really any issues until the last couple weeks. And, um, you know, it's hogging up a lot of memory. Not really sure why. Anyway, so here we've got, oh, what just happened? Okay, for some reason it cleared all the outputs again. All right, so we should see these images working. I'm just pulling the image utility from a separate file. Okay, so um, I'm gonna write a plotting function and uh, that's just gonna help us see images side by side. So I'll just write that really quick. And I'm gonna call it compare images, so. Actually, let me All right. Um, so I'm going to call this compare IMGS and we'll do the original and the modified. And we'll say plt dot figure and I'll just do some values that I use commonly in in uh, Jupyter Notebooks and for one axis I'm just going to add the subplots and on axis one I'm going to uh, go ahead and show one of those images. I am show, I'll show the original and cmap gray and then 
Um, I'm going to set, I'll just make a label set x label, call that original. And then I can do same thing for axis two. And this will be instead of one, two, one, it'll be one, two, two, because it's the one to the right and call this axis two. And this will be modified. And Okay. Mm. Let's see if this works. All right. So um, I'm going to just test this with, well, you know what? I'll run this top. first and I'll do compare images and I'll just compare the two images that we already have. So compare images and the original will be I am one and then the other one will be I am two. Let's see if that works. Nope. Compare images is not defined. Ah. So I named it IMGS. Hmm. There we go. All right. So that is working. And that's just our utility in order to see, um, you know, in order to see that everything is working the way we'd expect. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hide these calls up here so that uh, when I rerun everything, I'm not spending a lot of time plotting. I'm only going to plot the most recent thing that we're working on. And then when I go back and update all this, I will, um, you know, have a, Kind of seamless thing going on here. All right, so now let's start writing some filters and we will convolve them over the over the images themselves. So what we're going to start with is what's called an averaging filter. And this is just going to average all of the values in a window. And I'll just say averaging filter. And averages all values um, viewed by the kernel. And this can be pretty straightforward. So I'll jump over to, to my text editor. And let's just go and define average. And so average, it's gonna take an image. And what it's going to do, we're gonna, I'm going to first pass the image through the image utility. And that's just to kind of make this more portable um, in case you wanna use this with a color image. Um, I'm gonna say kernel is going to get, um, I'm going to build, build the kernel within here and I'm going to build a five by five kernel. And that's just uh, five rows, five columns. And the data type is going to be float. And um, if we wanted to see this, I could just print the kernel here if we want to take a look. But um, if you can imagine, this is just each row is just one is it's just five ones and that's repeated. So that's what our kernel looks like. We could define this explicitly. That would be fine. But um, as I mentioned earlier, we can just use np.ones and that will generate a matrix full of ones. Okay. So now I'm going to perform the convolution and I'm just going to say 
that image is going to get the convolve 2D of the image and the kernel. And um, I'm going to end up with an image of the same size and uh, symmetrical boundaries and okay so we should be able to return this now oh i need to convert this so i'm going to do image i'm going to convert this back to floats in the integer range and um this is just a rescaling of the image if you can imagine so um go ahead and do np.max of the image so what is this doing right uh the convolution of an averaging filter will update all the pixels in the image with the mean value of all pixels in the neighborhood of the kernel the neighborhood is just um, the part of the image that the kernel sits over right um, the center of the kernel sits over a pixel and everything else that the kernel touches is the neighborhood if that makes sense so um, what i'm doing here is i'm generating the kernel and it's a matrix of ones five by five and um, then I normalize the output here. I could, uh, I probably should just abstract this into a separate function, but, um, you know, I am going to do this every time. So, hmm, yeah, yeah, I'll just do it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to normalize the image and I'm just going to make a function called normalize. Anything that you do more than one one time, you know, want to more than two times, let's say, you want to write a function. And I'm going to be doing this over and over again. So that's another little utility function. All right, so let's see what this does. And that was just called average. And with this, uh, I'm going to do the compare images. So compare IMGS, and I'm going to look at IM1. Uh, let's do IM1 underscore first. So we'll look at what this does to the bear. IM1, and then average of IM1. Name average is not defined, of course it's not. And at this point, hopefully it won't be too time consuming to run all the cells above. All right, so now we're comparing the images. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so can't see too much of a difference when we're looking at this. Um, at least not offhand. Um, but what is happening, uh, if I make this a lot bigger, we might be able to see a little bit of something. Um, there is slightly more detail that can be seen here. There's a little bit of a blurred effect that's happening with averaging. And that's really what we're considering, um, with some of these filters. Uh, you know, what's happening here is it can be somewhat subtle and we'll see it in clearer terms with another image that we'll generate in a little bit. 
So let's do this for IM2 as well and see if we can notice it a little bit better operating on IM2. So again, it's not going to be highly noticeable here. I'll try to zoom in a little bit. But there is a slight blur here. And uh, the noise itself has been lessened just a little bit. I think you can see this most strongly. Like here, this, uh, this line, this contour line, uh, on the chin is darker than it is over here. And part of that is that this filter is averaging, right? And it's taking the mean value from that neighborhood and it's putting it into this location. So, um, you know, if we were to run this a number of times, we would further and further blur the image. Um, but we don't, you know, we don't need to do that here. We're just going to um, we're going to leave this as it is, but then we'll see averaging in a bit of a, in, in a different way at a later time. So, uh, let's go ahead and write, hmm, let's write a filter that, uh, does a little bit of edge detection and um, we're going to write this in order to be able to uh, get vertical edges, like up and down edges, horizontal edges, or both. And we'll just see what that ends up looking like. So I'm going to write a filter, uh, a very well-known filter called the Sobel filter. And um, essentially we're passing a window across that is going to reward some edges and punish other edges. And so um, I'm just gonna define Sobel and we're passing in an image and we're going to assume that we want both edges, but we'll test this on, we'll test this for uh, both vertical and horizontal. And we'll see those separately. So uh, again, I'm going to make this generalizable for um, using this image utility function. So you could pass in a color image. This is going to return a grayscale image. All right, so I'm going to make a vertical Sobel filter and I'm going to define it explicitly. Uh, you don't always have to do this, right? This is something that you could automatically define. And zero, then two, and one. Okay. I'm going to copy this, but I am going to change the values here to um, three, four, five, and let's see, negative one, negative four, negative six, negative four, and negative one. And then here to negative eight, negative 12, negative eight, Oh, whoops, that should be negative two. And this should be negative eight. This will be negative 12. And then negative eight and negative two. And then notice there, we've got this column of zeros in the middle. And this is going to allow us to um, detect the vertical edges, negative two, uh, and then here we're just looking at eight, 
and four. Here we're looking at uh, six, sorry, 12 and six. Here we're looking at eight, four. Here we're looking at two and one. Okay, so that's, uh, that's as we want it. And we go ahead and define the horizontal version of this as vert.t. Is that right? Oh, no, that's not right. We'll just, uh, we'll just define this explicitly again. And it'll be fine. And Okay, and we'll do one, four, six, four, one. And we'll do two, eight, twelve, eight, two. Our row of zeros, one, two, three, four, five of them. Then negative two, negative eight, negative 12, negative eight, negative two. And this will be one, four, six, four, one, but those will be negative, so negative, negative. Okay. All right. It's a little time consuming, but those are our two kernel options. And oh, let me just do that. Okay. All right. So we're going to ask if the orientation is horizontal. Then the the output image is going to be the convol convolution, the 2D convolution, involve 2D of the image and the horizontal filter, um, and then all of our settings that we set before. So boundary, symmetrical, and fill value of zero. Okay. And we'll say elif orientation is vertical. Then we're going to essentially do the same thing, but we're going to pass in the other filter, which is vertical. And that's fine. And then what about both? So in this case, um, we're going to create the image H, which will be our um, horizontal image V, and then um, we're going to combine the two. So, uh, this should have an equal sign. And this is just going to be the same snippet of code And in this case, we're going to take the square root of the square of the sum of squares of these two. So image h plus np dot square of image v. So we're uh, squaring the images, adding them together, and then uh, taking the square root in order to compose this new image that will be both the left and right, um, sorry, both the horizontal and vertical 
um, Sobel filters, edge detections. So let's grab that, what is it, normalization. We're going to normalize the image as we have been doing. And this is just going to be the image is going to get the normalized version of itself. And let's see. Um, there are probably going to be some negative values in here. And I'm going to account for those by clipping between um, clipping the image between 0 and 255. And this is a, pro a pretty common thing that does happen uh, when you're writing these kinds of functions. Hmm, interesting. Unused variable vert. How is that unused? I think I'm using it here. Ah, we'll see. There might be an error in here, but we'll troubleshoot it. And then uh, I'm just going to return the image. All right. So jump back over to here. Go to the top of the document, and I'll rerun that. And I'll go back to the bottom of the document. And let's go ahead and apply the Sobel filter. So... And we're going to do this a couple times. So I am Sobel. Let's do I am two Sobel Furt. And this is just going to get uh, Sobel on I am two underscore Vert. And then let's compare images. And that'll take I am two underscore and I am two. Sobel vert. So I'm going to do that. Oop, compare images is not spelled that way. Invalid shape for image data. That's always fun. Um, image two, image two, Sobel vert. Let's find out where this is. Let's, uh, let's just try showing this image first. See if there's something going on here. Okay. Trying to see where this error is actually occurring. Hmm. Ah, that might explain something. Um, this looks like it is completely empty. So that looks like a scalar value. Great. Where is this happening? NP clip. Huh. I wonder if there's something wrong with Oh. Hmm. 
Yeah. That completely makes sense. Um, I need to modify all the values in here. And what I was actually doing is just returning a scalar value, uh, not returning a matrix when I do this. So let me go ahead and return a modified matrix instead. And that should correct that. So let's go ahead, back that up so that we're comparing again. And okay, that is a much better kind of error. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's go ahead, modify this just a little bit more. So I am underscore gets I am dot copy actually let's go ahead and modify this in place I'm not actually worried about this so let's do that one more time and for the sake of expediency I'll clean this up later I'm just going to put this little import here and we'll see if that works. Ha, ah, awesome. So this might be a little hard to see, but let's go ahead and pull this up. So notice we're, we're preserving vertical edges and uh, or we're pulling out vertical edges and this is sort of a solarized effect. Um, notice horizontal edges are sort of disappeared in this. So let's look at horizontal. And then let's look at both. Okay, so notice these horizontal images and I'll maybe what I'll do is just pull each of these up individually. So here's horizontal. And those are pretty strikingly different, but then let's look at when we pull out both edges. Yeah. So that this is one of the edge detection approaches and there's other filters like uh, I usually use a Roberts filter. Um, but there are a number of other filters. Uh, one thing I'm not going to show here for edge detection, um, one of the common filters is uh, is the Laplacian transform and um, or Laplacian filter, that is. And, um, you know, it's another passing of a kernel across. And you can imagine that if we were to change the filter sizes of these we'd end up or sorry with the if we change the kernel sizes of these we'd end up with different effects and so you know this is a method of edge detection it's not the only method um and you can adjust these in order to have uh more or less allowed through in the edge detection so let me comment these out And we go ahead and push that. Okay. So I'm going to show one of my favorite filters, and then we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit 
and think a little bit about um, injecting noise into things. And, um, and then we'll probably call it for the day. I think this is, uh, you know, once you get into writing your own filters and kind of looking at them, all of this will sort of click and then you can start looking filters up and writing them yourself. You can also uh, go to SK image and utilize the filters that they have. That's something that very much exists and you can use them out of the box. So let's just do, let's do this. Uh, median filters, uh, this is just going to, um, it's going to take all the pixels within a neighborhood um, in a sorted way and take the median value to replace the value of the pixel of interest. Um, it tends to smooth an image and it tends to reduce noise. And um, it's one of those, you know, if you've done a lot of stuff with uh, Photoshop or if you've done a lot with um, Illustrator, you know, it kind of looks like it vectorizes images. And that's not exactly what it does, but, um, you know, it, it does go, um, it does build out uh, a sort of simplification of the image while preserving the morphology of the image. And I think it can be really helpful. So let's go ahead and write this. And it's going to make some good logical sense. We could write this in a cleaner way, but I just want to write it in a little bit of a brute force way to give you an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to set a filter width and we can play around with this filter width to see different effects. Oops, keep doing shift enter and running my terminal. All right, so um, I'm going to, again, first process the image that's input so that this is a portable function. And um, I'm going to actually put in a helper function here. So, so this is a helper function to get a list uh, to get a to get the median. Uh, I'm just gonna I don't even need that comment because I'm just gonna make a function and call it get median. And I'm gonna say for each role value, column value, um, I'm going to build a list of neighbors. I could do this as an NP array, I'm just gonna do a list. And I'm gonna do for each filter row, oops, each filter row um, in the range from the negative filter width to the filter width plus one. And for the filter column, in the uh, negative filter width to the filter width plus one, we're going to say each neighbor or neighbor is going to get image dot item. Uh, so that's gonna be the row value plus the filter row and the column value plus the filter column. And then we can append that neighbor, okay? So we're basically picking a pixel and we're picking everything to the right by, um, by the filter width. And if you notice, I, I'm putting filter width five. That's not the entire width of the filter. It's to the, it's five to the left and five to the right, five above, five down. And so, um, you know, it ends up being uh, 11 by 11. Okay, so neighbor, we're going to just append that neighbor and then we can just sort it, right? We can sort it and take the middle value. So sort, and then I'm just gonna return neighbors and 
This is just going to be the actual median value. So int length of the neighbors. And is it there? No, it's there. Okay. And so this is just taking the middle value from there. And now I can just say uh, row column gets image dot shape and we can get all those medians and build a new image. So let's get the medians. I'm gonna say for row value in np.a range, filter width and row minus filter width. And this is, again, this isn't the best approach. I'm using nested for loops, but if you want to pick this apart, um, I think this is an easier way to conceptualize it. Uh, at the end of the day, you would be using uh, matrix operations to do this more likely. So, so and I'm just going to modify that image in place, not what we passed in, but um, the image and the, the image that we applied the utility function to. So row val and call val. So just notice we're passing in a, uh, an X and a Y value essentially, or essentially a, a row value and a column value. And we are updating each row and column value uh, each pixel we're updating with the median. And that's all we're doing. So let's go ahead and I think that's it. Yeah, I believe that's it. So let's return the image and discover how many errors we have in this. And I'm just gonna do the same thing uh, so I don't have to scroll so many times. I'm just going to uh, get this import statement again. I'll clean this up later. So This will be I am two median. And um, we're just going to get median on I am two. And don't think we're gonna pass in, I think I, I think we'll leave it as the default value and we'll see if this works. Okay. Name median is not defined. Interesting. Okay. It's because I have an error. All right. For filter column. Hmm. Let's figure out what this is. Hmm. I'm gonna snag this and I'm just gonna pull it over into Jupyter really quick and see, okay, that's where it is. So for filter column in np.a range, that looks like it should work. Is a small typo. List indices must be integers or slices, not float. That absolutely makes sense because right here when I'm indexing, I am 
not wrapping that in int. Okay, Let's try this again. Now you can imagine this might take a little bit longer to run because um, we're passing across every pixel of the image and um, this function isn't very optimal. You know, to say the least, it's not very optimal. Um, but, you know, we'll see what we get out the other side of it. Okay. So here's what I'm getting. And if you look at this, notice we've sort of smoothed everything out. And uh, anything, you know, any like finer detail sort of gets turned into um, something that's a little bit more uh, a little bit more clean and that's kind of nice right like this you could imagine this as being an effective way to uh an effective way to build um a, you know a cleaner image set that has less noise so with that in mind let's go ahead and write something that is going to give us it's going to give us something a little bit uh, noisy. So let's go ahead and add noise to this image. Huh. I think I need to interrupt this kernel. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to take IM2 and I'm going to make it noisy. And um, I'm going to insert uh, normal noise, just Gaussian noise. And uh, to do that, I'm going to set a mean and a uh, standard deviation. And um, I'm just going to do 0 and 25. So you can imagine we're, we're going to put some static into this image on either side of each pixel value. And I'm going to say noise, it's going to get np.random.normal, uh, and we'll do mu, sigma, and we'll do im2's shape. We're going to build this noise in the shape of the original image, and go zero, and one. Okay. And I'm going to say I am noise. I'll just say I am G, I am two noise. And it's just going to be I am two plus. I am, or plus noise. And um, that should get us, uh, you know, values that are subtracted, you know, added. Um, we're going to see, let's compare these images. We're going to see to a grainier image. So I am to noise. And it may be counterintuitive, but there are times where you inject noise into your data. 
and that can be helpful. You can actually use this as a, a way to engineer features in your data and improve the performance of neural nets. Um, so here we've injected a bunch of noise and now let's run the median filter on that. So I'm going to say I am, I am two, no, uh, I'll call this median noise and it's going to get the median on I am two noise. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and just output this image somewhere so that it's not, um, try it. There's something going on with how well this is, uh, how well this is showing images at the moment. It's a little bit frustrating, but, um, go ahead and run this and Once that is outputting, I'll grab the image and we'll take a look at it. So um, let me grab the other image and we can compare these. So median filter for an image with, actually, why don't I do this? I'll just grab the median filtered image. So this is what we, what we were just looking at, right? And let's look at that same image after injecting noise and applying the median filter again. Okay. So we we haven't gotten to you know kind of a a an equivalence here some sort of baseline equivalence from the original um but you can see that like morphologically speaking these are doing pretty well um maybe we're losing a little bit uh over here right um or over here in the noise injected image but at the very least we're getting something out of this that uh, maintains a lot of the morphology from the original. And, you know, when you're considering this, uh, you might think of it in the ter in terms of pre-processing images for a data set. And it's one of those things that maybe you would try. Maybe you would try a median filter across your entire image, image set as a pre-process um, before passing it into a neural net. Or maybe you would have a second input that is the median image or a Sobel filtered image or um, any number of other uh, filters that you might pass across. So, um, yeah, oh. So I'm going to go ahead and spin down right about now um, and leave you with you know this thought that um, there are a lot of different ways that you can manipulate images and not just for the sake of pre-processing for passing in, passing things into a data set. It's not just that it can be that. And, um, that's great if that is, um, what you're working on, but you can kind of, uh, do really heavy modifications of images and, you know, you can code your own Photoshop, essentially, like you can, if you get good enough at, you know, the kinds of uh, things that, that we're looking at here, you can do some pretty incredible manipulations of images without, uh, and you can do, you can do them automatically. You can do them on large, large volumes of work. So, um, yeah. So thanks, and we're probably going to continue uh, image manipulation stuff in the next couple sessions, and um, you know just sort of keep digging into it because it's one of those uh, sets of skills that illuminates a lot about linear algebra, um, and it gives you something you can play around with.
So I'll clean up my notebook a little bit and I will push that and you know feel free to do whatever you want with the materials in that repository. So uh, thanks so much.